Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Tuesday, the 21st of June. Happy summer to you, 2022. Time for the hurricane outlook and discussion. Tropical wave time. The tra uh, tropical wave train has begun. We've had some tropical waves come across already, but what we have now are definitely a more robust set of tropical waves. We call that the wave train. is starting to kick up a little bit early to be seeing it. So the question now will become, does something develop from these tropical waves? And the short answer is probably not. And the reason I say that is because climatology. There's a reason why we don't have hurricanes between Africa and, let's say, the Lesser Antilles in June. And that is climatology. It's just not ready yet. The background state is not conditionally supportive of tropical cyclone development this time of year. Dry air. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you as we progress, shall we? All right, so let's start off first with a satellite animation here. Look at that. There's the heat dome building over the nation's midsection. Uh, Going to be very, very hot here. I know this is not tropical in nature that we're talking about here, but this is a big story and a big deal overall. A lot of people with a lot of triple-digit uh, heat to deal with. And then there's that trough that came through recently. Um, maybe a little bit of an upper low tries to develop over here. Sometimes those can hang around over the warm waters of the western Atlantic and try to develop into something. Nothing pressing in the computer models right now that indicates that. Then over here we have Celia trying to come back from a near-death experience, uh, getting some easterly shear right now. You can see that because of that rounded appearance on the eastern side of it, kind of getting its hair blown back, so to speak. And then a uh, tropical wave moving through the windwards. There's another tropical wave in here somewhere. Looks like there's one here and then certainly one coming off of Africa. So it's getting a little bit busier out there with pieces of energy. And so we have to wonder, does something try to consolidate and become more of a concern than just a tropical wave? The vorticity chart says no, not in the Atlantic anyway. That's what's left over of Bloss just a remnant area of vorticity and low-level energy. This is Celia, which is starting to make more of a comeback. And then you notice through the tropical Atlantic here, except for this area, we'll exit for now, uh, south of 20 north down towards 10 north, out to the islands and beyond, into the Caribbean, not much. Just a little bit of energy in here, strung out over a wide distance. The air in here is pretty dry. Relative humidity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere is too low. Not enough what we call instability. You have to have instability. The whole atmosphere can't be uniform. You have to have cold air above warm air and other things, a lot of moisture, especially in the mid-levels, to get some lift going on. And there's just not much of that right now, which, again, is very typical for the month of June. So that's not out of the ordinary at all. Having hurricanes in June would be out of the ordinary. But there's always a but, right? Uh, we do certainly have a pretty active tropical wave train that's one way to put it uh, looks like one in here some intertropical convergent zone and maybe some monsoon trough action as well just a focusing area uh, where the winds come together and you get some upward motion uh, tropical wave trying to come off africa maybe one here and then some other energy all the way across towards the ethiopian highlands so there's a lot of energy across the continent here ready to come off and it'll just be a matter of is the Atlantic ready for their arrivals? And that's the big question mark. And we won't know. You know, the computer guidance is helpful, but it doesn't tell us everything. It doesn't know the future. It's just a prediction. And it's all about probability anyway. So different people are talking about it. Here is a tweet from the weather.us Twitter feed. Two African easterly waves are forecast to emerge into the eastern Atlantic this week, the tweet says. Whether or not they develop which is the topic of our conversation here, remains to be seen. They have to cross a somewhat hostile Atlantic. And again, what does that mean, a hostile Atlantic, dry air, sinking air? Uh, the trade winds have slowed a little bit, and the upper shear, the upper level change of wind direction with height, we call that shear, that's a little bit below the long-term average. So there are some ingredients there, but some ingredients are not enough ingredients in this case it doesn't appear that we're going to have anything develop out of these systems. That's not to say it won't, or these won't, plural, but we don't see anything that we can really hang our hat on just yet. Uh, Andy Hazelton, whom, by the way, let me bring me back on for a second, I am going to speak with Andy 
on Thursday to do a special edition of the Hurricane U series. Hadn't done this in a while. What is Hurricane U? It's our little educational series that we do. Hurricane University is short for that. Even has the cute little college looking logo or whatever. Uh, Andy and I are going to talk about TUT. T U T T. And what is all that about? We're going to do that on Thursday and I'll publish that uh, across all social media, links to it on YouTube, etc. So that's coming up on Thursday. We will be talking with Andy. I cite enough of his tweets. It's time we meet him in person, so to speak, at least over Zoom anyway, the digital version of in person, and learn a little bit about the tropical upper troposphere trough, or the tut. Anyhow, what is Andy saying today? Well, the global forecast system, the GFS, depicts a fairly dry and stable MDR. That's the main development region north of the intertropical convergence zone next week. Fairly typical of this time of year, like I was saying. And it could be a limiting factor to those waves that are coming off of Africa. Uh, shear is definitely pretty low, he says, for this time of year. But it's not a very favorable, and there's the key word. I'm going to highlight it in red. Thermodynamic pattern. That's an important word. Thermodynamics. That's a whole class, by the way, in meteorology. And if, if you've been through it, I didn't because I wanted to study geography and what these things do instead of the mechanics of why they do what they do. I wasn't so much interested in the math and the physics of why. I wanted to study more of what they do, the impact side. As a geographer and an earth scientist, that's my goal. Anyway, I didn't have to take thermodynamics, but I laugh because people have had major headaches because of that. But this is an important term, and it's just simply that the uh, the instability is just not there. A dry environment. And we're not talking Phoenix dry, you know, where you go outside and you look like that lizard Rango from that 2011 animated movie. You remember Rango? Look it up. And it's a good movie, by the way, uh, where he just shrivels up. Uh, Rango does, and his skin falls off. It's not that dry, but you got to have some pretty high relative humidity in about the mid-levels of the atmosphere to really juice these systems up quite literally. And that's part of the thermodynamic process overall. And we'll ask um, Andy about that. You know, and not only the tut, but tell us about thermodynamics in two minutes or less. <laughs> that should be a fun conversation. So we can see this pretty easy right here. Uh, dry right now, this is the GFS. That's all dry air, relatively speaking. I mean, look, this is the relative humidity uh, between 700 and 300 millibars of the atmosphere. And we're talking that these values are some of these darker browns, you know, let's, let's say 15, 20, 25 percent maybe. That's pretty low relative humidity. The desert out there in Phoenix, in the Sonoran Desert area, in the Mojave, um, you know, you're probably talking 5 to 3%, I guess, right? Something like that. So this is pretty dry. It's not that dry. And then the green, this is where your moisture is all through here. And there's that tropical wave coming off. So, yeah, you can see most of the Atlantic right now dominated by, the, the tropical Atlantic dominated by uh, a lot of dry air. So does this persist? Well, let's move this little slider here out and see. And generally speaking, yes, it does persist. Most of the moisture is confined down here in the intertropical convergent zone area, really far to the south. The dry air gets pushed off of Africa. The subtropical high up here keeps it kind of forced down here. It's just not time yet. It's not time yet. That's, again, climatology is on our side, so to speak. That's 96 hours and then 120. There you go. There's day five. So five days out, might be some pieces of energy coming through here, but then there's the dry air. The thermodynamics just aren't there. And that's good because we know eventually this will change. The big Bermuda Azores high will lift more to the north. All that dry air will get lifted more to the north as well. More moisture will come out across the main development region. Um, I've seen some people talk about it. This is not 2005 where we were just wide open Thermodynamics were perfect all season long. We had Cindy, we had Cat5 Dennis, well, darn near Cat5 Dennis. It was uh, Cat5 Emily was a Category 5. Dennis in 05 almost made it to Category 5. It was 150 miles per hour, I believe, at peak intensity. This is not that year. We can still have a devastating, very, very busy season 
if it's not 2005 or 2017. That's been tossed around some as well. So let's don't compare seasons against seasons. We don't do that. People, well, people do it. It's not looked upon favorably in relationships, whether it's with your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your spouse, or whatever. Well, you know, you're not like the other person. I, whatever. You get me? It's not good in relationships, and you don't really, it's not helpful when comparing past seasons to an extent. You know, hindcast and uh, analogs can be somewhat helpful, but it's not the cure-all. You understand this? You can't look and say, well, it's not 2005, so it's just not going to be that busy. That is not a correct statement either. All right? All right. So for the next several days, things look fairly tame and fairly tranquil, and we'll take it because eventually the lid will come off, literally. The instability will be there, and we'll have plenty of hurricanes and probably a lot of trouble to have to deal with. So between now and then... Let's enjoy the quiet. All right, that is it from me for today. Fairly short here. Don't forget, speaking of short, I do have the What's Up in the Tropics every morning, and I've done 21 of them in a row. I know I keep saying that, but I really do want to do all hurricane season long, even if one of them is, and several of them are like a minute long. Like, there's nothing going on. Forget it. It's not happening. Fine. I want to log 183 of them in a row if I possibly can. As long as I have a communication way to do so, I will do it. Anyway, that's in the morning called What's Up in the Tropics. And then this Hurricane Outlook and Discussion is in the afternoon most days. Sometimes there won't be a reason, you know, so we don't do it. Uh, anyhow, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, especially the notification button. Notify yourself. Make sure you're notified when I post a video if you want to. You don't have to, but hopefully you like what I do. All right, that is it for me. Again, like I said, I'm done for the day. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'm Mark Stutter for Hurricane Track. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more for you starting tomorrow morning.